Now y'all know I love tying classic patterns, but I also like mixing in some modern flies. And since I haven't tied a modern nymph in a while, and I haven't tied out of Charlie Craven's 2015 Tying Nymphs in a while either, figured I'd do one of those today. And the one I picked, he calls the Net Builder. It's a fairly standard check nymph, tied on a curved shank hook, heavily weighted, fairly sleek design. It's got some thin skin for their shell back and then black ostrich hurl for the front legs. And you can tie this with or without a bead, and it's probably not a bad idea to have both versions in your box if you're fishing through some really fast or deeper water that you just need to punch through real quick, yeah, tungsten bead's gonna help you out there. So this one, it's a really simple pattern. No exotic materials, not a lot of complicated steps, but there are a good many steps, so it's not a real quick tie. But still, you know this thing is a fish catcher. So there we go in the vise, the Net Builder or Check Nymph from Charlie Craven's 2015 Tying Nymphs. Now he says sizes for this are 8 to 14. I'm going to tie it on a size 10. This is a fairly generic one extra short, I believe, curve shank hook. It's also a one extra strong, but I am going to put some weight on it. And your choice here, I want to go with 015. You could certainly go with a, an 020 if you want, but we're going to put quite a few wraps, maybe a dozen or so to cover the middle part of the fly. After you got the weight on, some black thread. I'm gonna go with a 70 denier. I'll put a little dam up front, try to smooth out this lump between the hook and the weight, and do the same thing in the back, and then take it around the bend of the hook. Okay, that doesn't always work when you try to break it. I just kind of frayed it a little bit, so we'll go ahead and snip that. But you do wanna go pretty far around the, the bend of the hook. We got a pretty long body on this. But first thing we're gonna catch in is some Zelon fibers for a tail. And this is like a, a half of one strand. Antron would be fine here. Probably some kind of synthetic nylon would work. Just in a light color. You know, it's the, the trailing shuck here. And don't worry about your length yet. We will trim it before we're done. So go well around the bend. And you can use this to help fill in this gap right here if you want. Probably not that vital. You could just snip it and move on. All right, that's a little bit of a, a mess right there, but you know what? I'm fine with that. Just take some wraps right here, take our thread right back up front, we're gonna catch in our thin skin next. So what I do with this thin skin, I just cut a, a piece about a half of a hook gap, and I'm gonna cut it along the top of this. That'll be about the size I need. Let's measure that, see, okay, that's pretty close to a half a hook gap. And let's just catch this in right up here on top of the weight. Don't go too far forward yet or you might end up crowding your eye later. So I think that's gonna be fine right there. Just a few tight wraps and that came off. This is a little bit thick stuff. So it's, it's not like a body stretch, which is really thin. So just take your time, be careful here and keep this on top of the hook as we go back. Just, you know, maybe fold it over on a little bit on each side. Okay, when you think you got the body about as long as you're gonna want it, I think that's gonna be fine right there. Go ahead and catch in some monofilament, some 3X tippet. Now you could probably go with a 4X, but I wouldn't go much lighter than that because we are gonna put some pretty tight wraps with this on here. And I also wouldn't necessarily use fluorocarbon, I would just use your cheap nylon stuff. Park that nylon out of your way, put a good bit of wax on your thread here. And Charlie called for some Nature Spirit Emergence Dubbing, which I didn't have, so I kind of made a little custom blend here. Just an olive, or a caddis green, and an olive mix. This is probably 70% rabbit, and then maybe 30% ice dub. And I'm gonna put it on here pretty thin because we've already got a, you know, a fairly thick body right there with all that thin skin and weight. And maybe a four inch noodle, but it'll probably take us, you know, two noodles to do the whole body.
And the next thing we're gonna catch in, some ostrich hurl. So find one with the longest barbs you have, and this is about it for me. So it's probably not as long as I'd really like, but we'll make it work. And let's take it back just a little bit. I don't want quite the first third of the hook covered with this, but you know, a significant little leggy thorax area. Now just wrap this ostrich hurl and take your time. You might get five, six, seven wraps up here. Just gonna try not to let them slide down too far forward on me. And that's a little bit matty, but we're gonna make it work. And you do probably need to snip these. They don't pluck out as easily as Peacock Hurl does. But next, just lick your fingers and try to pull these down to the bottom. Maybe need another wrap right there. And now our thin skin. Just try to keep that rib out of the way and you're gonna to wanna to pull this pretty tight, but try to keep it right on top of the hook. Maybe pinch it right here. We'll do a couple of tight wraps right here that we're gonna end up backing off in just a minute. But just to hold that in while we wrap this, you know, uh, nylon monofilament rib. I'm gonna put the first one up under that Z-line. Now just pull these kinda tight. This is why we're using 3X Tippet. I'm trying to get a really good bite on these. And then just take it all the way up, whatever segmentation you think is gonna look right. Now when you get up front, you can just back these off. It looks like those came off, so we're fine right there and just keep pinching this in as you wrap these tight, you know, this rib tight going all the way up. Now this takes a little bit of dexterity here. You gotta hold this, keep tension on this rib while you catch it off. A couple of tight wraps right here. Make sure we're not clobbering our eye. I think we're fine right there, so just enough wraps where you're comfortable that you can snip this off without it unraveling on you. So let's go ahead and cut this rib and then pull this thin skin kinda tight as you snip it off right here. And we'll snip this tail here in just a second, but let's go ahead and work on our head. Just make sure you don't close up your eye. Get several wraps up over this thin skin and build your little nymph head right here. Now after you whip finish it, go ahead and snip this and we'll cut this to size. And this is just a tiny little sliver of a tail right here. So grab all these and cut them fairly short right there. Now before we put the head cement on it or UV resin, take a black Sharpie and just color in the, the first third or so right here on top of this thin skin and a little bit around to the sides. Gives you the, the dark front half of the fly. And really that's it. Just a drop of head cement right there on those thread wraps. And if you want to singe those extra, you know, ostrich hurl coming off, go for it. I did on one of them and it did make it look just a little bit better. So that's it, my friends. The Net Builder from Charlie Craven's 2015 Tying Nymphs. Pretty simple tie, but you know this thing's going to be a pretty effective pattern. So I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.